Something that I really like seeing is guns being reviewed by a real-life person and the real end user of the firearm. The reason that I say that is any of the guns that you see on my channel, they're mine. I paid cash for them, or card, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I own them. If I have an opinion about it, I paid a lot of money to be able to give you that opinion. If you don't want to listen to me, go ahead and listen to the manufacturer's videos. They're going to tell you everything that you want to hear. This is real information from a real person who really owns this gun. Nobody paid for it. Nobody sponsors anything. Um, and I'm never going to not give you my honest opinion about something. If you don't like that, go watch a manufacturer video. Go watch... Um, you know, somebody who is kind of unbiased about this, that they'd be reviewing it on, just simply for the fact they didn't have to pay for it. So, the SIG MCX and MPX line of firearms has become kind of a craze. I'll admit, I was one of the first to jump into it. Um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, short stroke gas operated, um, not direct impingement, like an AR pistol would be sold, sign, you know, sh shut up and take my money. So, let's break into it. Starting with the box, there is your price point, right around 2500 bucks. So, the Rattler is a few hundred dollars more expensive, actually six-ish hundred dollars more expensive than the Virtus. Why? We have a muzzle device ring thing. I don't, I don't really have a name for it. Um, so this is beveled on the inside. So it fits the profile of the barrel and gives you a flat surface to um, tighten down a different muzzle accessory. And it gives you basically the proper indexing. So it's really cool that they give you these. You used to have to buy them before. SIG kind of wins my heart for this. They come with Lancer mags, which are my favorite, and Clear Smoke is my favorite color, so. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I have already opened this. All right. And there you have the SIG MCX Rattler. All right, before we look at differences, let's look at just general features of the Rattler. Um, I am running Troy Sights already. No, it didn't come with them. SIG, the first generation of the MPX, came with folding iron sights. They no longer do. Um, same story here. You will not get sights from the factory. It's kind of a bummer and a very quick $209 to add these. Um, so we have forward and rear QD swivel mounts. Same on the other side. Um, these are one third turn in the front and full spin in the rear. So. When you get locked in, you only have about that much movement in the front, and then in the rear it can spin freely. Features that immediately pop out, and the mag release. On the other side, you'll notice a much bigger profiled mag release. Um, I think Stoner initially should have done this, and I think all ARs should have this. You'll notice that it is actually covered by the flares in the lower receiver, so it's not something that is easy to bump being oversized and accidentally drop your mag. However, it's incredibly easy to just index it and get. I mean, you can be really, really sloppy just slapping your finger on it. The other thing that I like too is being able to have the option to strip a mag out by using your thumb. I think having this here is a cool feature. I don't know that I'll use it like that. I'm so used to the battery of operations of a standard AR that I can't really get over, you know, 
the way that I was trying to use them. So, um, it is a cool feature. I may implement it, but I would only do that if I was training to solely run an MCX or MPX. And that for me is actually not the case. Um, I still run AR platforms and other similar platforms. So I don't want to get myself in the habit of using my thumb to pull the mag, but it's kind of really irrelevant, I guess. All right, another big feature is having an adjustable gas block that's very easily accessible. These guns were designed with a few very key things in mind. One of them is modularity in which you can change barrel, uh, length, and caliber. Um, it's my understanding that they just came out with the 6.5 Creedmoor variant, which is pretty neat. One of the things that they really wanted to have was full auto capability um, as well as suppressed. They hit the nail on the head with that one. Um, I think this gun runs great for either. Um, while I have not personally shot one of these full auto, I have a lot of friends who have, and they all report great things about it. Take that for what it's worth, I guess. So if we look at the Rattler, and then we look at the Virtus. You'll notice right off the bat that the Rattler is significantly smaller, all with about the same capabilities. So I'm looking at the Virtus. This has Ambi, um, Ambi. So despite upgrades, um, what's the real difference? I mean, the Rattler is smaller, lighter, in my opinion, a hell of a lot cooler looking, but I mean, you have a seven and a half inch, I believe, barrel versus five and a half inches. Um, both have a one in five twist rate. Um, this one's obviously been outfitted because this is one of my primary personal defense weapons, but we're about to do the same on that Rattler. So the Virtus is about 600 bucks cheaper. Differences being not much. Um, longer barrel, it's a little bit heavier because of that, obviously. So you're gaining a little bit more velocity, not a whole lot. Controls are the same. Everything else is damn near identical. This weapon does have a loaded mag, however, it is not hot. I'm running the oversized Geisley charging handle, Troy folding battle sights front and rear, and the aim point comp M5 in a KDG side lock. Um, this has been a great weapon system for me. I've really enjoyed shooting it. It's everything I could ask for. So there's the side-by-side -side of the Virtus versus the Rattler. Where does the $700 difference come into play? This being the more expensive of the two. These are right around 2000 bucks. These are anywhere from 25 to 28 depending on where you're finding them. You might find them cheaper, at least in Washington State. You can't find these for under 2500 bucks. And if you can, congratulations, I don't really care. You don't need to send me a link. So obviously I thought the Rattler was worth the $2,500. Um, being as I own the Virtus already, it's kind of a testament to the fact that I definitely thought it was worth it. So here we have a rifle caliber carbine that's relatively short. And here we have a pistol caliber carbine. This is the SIG MPX. This is one aspect of the MPX that the MCX does not have. And I wish they would have carried it over, but they didn't. Both the Virtus and the Rattler take a special trigger. Um, the MPX is supposed to as well. However, again, the TACCOM 3MR trigger has ran great. When you're in the 3MR position, you do get finger slap and it feels really reminiscent of a Mac 10 or a Mac 11. Um, it hurts. So one thing to keep in mind, I don't ever actually run the 3MR setting. Um, it does in fact work with the MPX. However, I just, it's a waste of ammo trying to get it to do something that you should be able to do with a competition trigger in the first place. So 
I didn't put the 3MR in here thinking like, oh, I'm going to be the coolest kid ever. Um, it was more of a, this is a spare trigger that I had sitting around because it's kind of a joke and I didn't want to put it in any of my ARs. So it's better than the stock trigger and it's run reliably. Is the MPX better than any other pistol caliber carbine? Nope, never said that and I never will. This would be another great option. This is obviously an SBR and I can't conceal it, but tape switch up front. Um, it powers my D-ball. Um, this is both IR and white light. And this is night vision ready. This would be for, yeah, I got nothing. I'd be lying if I said I had a practical application for this gun. It's cool, it's fully night vision ready. I'm usually carrying a Glock, so having the 33 round Glock mag is pretty cool. Um, further than that, it's kind of a novelty to me anymore. So, we're not here to talk about the Vector. But if you guys want a video on it, I'll more than gladly do one. What does the pistol caliber carbine replace? For me, the answer is nothing. Um, there are rules that it can fill that something like a full-size 1911. For you dickheads who said that I didn't actually have a TRP operator, here you go. Yeah, here you go. Love this gun. Obviously, you could probably think of a hell of a lot more places where this would be much more practical than this. Um, work gun. Yeah. This, I mean, you're not too far off at this point. However, um, this definitely has a purpose behind it that this one doesn't fill as well. And this is 45 versus 9. Again, something else I'm not getting into. Um, what about other options? There you go. How does that work? The X2. Um, definitely has a place. Um, I could see the MPX and this being implemented as a unit. I could see something like this and, I don't know, something... like that being implemented as a carry system or, you know, if you're walking your dog at night. Yeah, the dry stun of a taser doesn't really do a hell of a lot and you have to be up close and personal, but it sounds scary as hell and it's usually more than enough to make somebody reconsider what they're doing. Um, let me tell you the number of times that I've had to actually deploy a cartridge via trigger versus just showing somebody a dry stun as this is called a warning arc and there's a reason for that and it works really well for that. It gives a warning of, hey, I'm not messing around, comply. Getting back on topic, if your goal is to get home to your rifle, do you choose a 45, like a full-size combat 45? Do you choose an MPX? Do you choose a small revolver? Um, this is what I'm carrying today. Glock 19. Do you choose a pocket carried 365? Do you choose a full size ultra combat tactical ridiculous 45 with an RMR? Um, the only person who can tell you what to carry is you, or your employer, I guess. Are there benefits of one versus another? Yes, absolutely, there are. What are they? Well, it really depends on what you're doing. I can't, I can't and I won't tell you why you should carry one versus another. That's for you to decide. So let's say I'm out and about, this gun fails me, or I'm going, holy crap, X scenario is going on right now, I need to get home. 
and all I have is a 3.3 inch barrel shooting 9mm. Well, this is legally a pistol. I could have this concealed in whatever I was driving. Space permitting, obviously. This is also a pistol. I could also have this concealed. Um, anywhere that I could have a pistol concealed, because by all legal right, this is a pistol. With our ultimate goal here, just being getting home. Let's pretend that this is a pre-SCAR 17S video. Um, and you need to get home. That's, that's your mission. Let's just say we're going to drop 9mm, go to a 300 blackout or 556 carbine or pistol. What is SIG lacking? Not much. They are lacking sights from the factory. It bugs me that they don't give you any, but what are you going to do? Um, if you're anything like me, you probably don't like having around in the chamber of a AR platform or AR style platform. I would much prefer just be able to rip on that charging handle and go to work from there and not have to worry about a negligent discharge with a 300 blackout. However, the SIG charging handle leaves a little to be desired. There's knurling, but not a ton. And if you're trying to get at it from the side, you're going to hit your pistol brace before you actually complete that cycle stroke. Um, for me, it's not big enough and I prefer more purchase, but nothing too ridiculous. So here we have the Geisley supercharging handle or the SCH. It's a little on the nose. But this is designed for the MCX, so let's go ahead and install that. This will be my first time taking apart this rattler. Um, my Virtus, yep, has extremely tight takedown pins. This apparently is no exception. Okay, charging handle. It's pretty simple. Pull everything back. Take your bolt carrier group out, set it aside, just like an AR, taking your charging handle out. Here's a quick side-by-side -side of what the two look like next to each other. I really like the hook on the Geisley. Um, it's more to grab onto and it's more positive and less to slip off of than the factory unit. Aesthetically, it looks better too. That's, I mean, there's no shame in the fact that you like that something looks a certain way versus something else. It doesn't always have to just be functional. So in goes the Geisley. Stick around until you find that cutout spot. Simple, simple. Much easier to grab onto. And if you look at the profile of the tabs, you're still gonna hit your hand, but if you make note of it, it's actually, it's a lot easier to grab onto than the factory one. So, there you go, that's what it looks like. All right, factory trigger. Already gross. Yeah, it feels like a standard just combat AR trigger. I mentioned this already, I believe. Um, these do not take standard AR style triggers, they are a proprietary trigger. Um, that's one hit that I'm gonna have to give the MCX and MPX is the fact that you can't just run your favorite AR trigger. However, my favorite AR trigger is a Geisley trigger anyways. So this is the MCX SD. I like flat face triggers. If you guys haven't figured that out by now, you're not paying attention. Um, these are 325 bucks and worth it in my opinion. All right, so triggers installed. And 
we're going to put everything back together. So function test, selector moves, pull the trigger, nothing happens. Nice clean break. Check our reset. Feels good. All right, so now our trigger is taken care of. There's one thing about this gun that's a little more prevalent being shorter than it was on the Virtus, but both carried the same trait, and that's the fact that it's really easy to get your finger out in front of the muzzle if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So the MPX came with this hand stop from the factory, which is really cool. The Virtus, I put the, um, I don't remember the name of this, it's just their M-Lock hand stop from Magpul. With the Rattler being so much smaller, I wanted to go smaller as well, so I went with a really, really tiny, low profile um, hand stop. I don't even honestly know who makes this. I'm going to give this a C- at best. The M-Lock slot is actually just a little bit too thick. Um, I'm not too worried about it, but it doesn't quite fit. It's still going to work, but it is what it is. Everything works, everything functions. Trigger is a vast improvement. So there's my take up, right there, my first stage, and then super crisp. Love it. Now, the only other thing is a red dot. Being as I have five or six 300 blackouts and I primarily plan on carrying this one, I'm actually just going to go ahead and take the Comp M5 off of my Virtus and just run the Virtus with the battle sights. So let's do that really quick. On the Virtus, I'm running the Comp M5. It's sitting in the KDG side lock. There's a little tab on the back. You push down. And with a little bit of finagling, there is a faster way of doing this. And I haven't done it in forever, so. Bear with me. There we go. So that was removal. Install is pretty difficult. You gotta just, um, oh wait, yeah, I'm done. So the answer is no. I cannot co-witness with these sights. Um, in order to be able to, this rail would have to be a lot lower and getting your cheek weld on a wire stock like this is its not painful, but it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. So I like the height of this riser and mount, I guess. Um, and worst case scenario, if I actually needed my backup sights and for some reason my aim point was to die, which I don't see happening. So if anything was to happen, I actually needed my backup iron sights. It's as simple as folding them down and wiggling this around and rolling it off. And then from there, irons. Simple. And just like that, it's secured and locked and it's very secure, very locked. I've never had this change point of impact ever. So, trigger upgrade, Comp M4, backup iron sights that don't co-witness, but they're there if I need them, and an oversized charging handle. So overall, I'm really happy with this build. Um, next is time to take it to the range. For me, this is going to be my primary and go-to weapon for PDW.
I can definitely see that the Virtus has its own place and the Rattler has its own place as well as the MPX. So um, I'm glad I own all three. And yeah, next will be a video at the range. If you guys haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, I try and get back to them as soon as humanly possible. Um, I will see you in the next video.